Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 9. It's on inertial mass. Have you ever wondered how astronauts figure out their mass when they're in space? If they were to stand on a specific scale like we have on Earth, it would read zero. They're weightless. And so they use a device like this. Here's Andre Gopers. Uh, he's a, a Dutch astronaut on the International Space Station and he's using a body mass measuring device. And it's essentially a platform that has a spring in the base. And so you can give it a push and it'll go up and down. Based on the mass of that platform, you can see that it has a pretty high frequency. What you can then do is load it with an astronaut and then you can give it a push. And you can see that since the astronaut has a greater mass, it has greater inertia, the frequency is going to be much slower. And so since the spring constant remains the same, you can figure out the mass of the astronaut. And so this is one way to measure mass. We call that inertial mass. But there's also gravitational mass, and I'll talk more specifically about that in the next video. However, when we're dealing with inertial mass, it's essentially interactions between objects and systems. But what we're looking at is some kind of a net force on an object which causes acceleration. And if we know the force and we know the acceleration, then in the case of this astronaut, we can measure their inertial mass. And so let's look at those three things, net force, inertial mass, and acceleration. How would you study that in a physics lab? Well, we could use a modified Atwood machine like this. And so we've got a cart attached to a string, and then this goes over a pulley. And then we have a stop at the end so that it just doesn't keep flying off of the table. And so let's put these things in the right spot. So the inertial mass we're trying to calculate is the mass of this cart. The net force is going to be constant. Why is it constant? Because we're attaching it to this pulley. And so the force of gravity is applying a net force on that cart. And what we'll see happening is that it's going to accelerate over time. You could also just pull this with a scale and make sure the constant force is maintained throughout that whole pull. Now let's watch what happens with a small mass of the cart. So just get a sense of what's going on. So you can see it's accelerating. In other words, it's starting slow and then it's speeding up. Now we could calculate that acceleration. We could use photo gates or a motion sensor. We could video it with a, um, a camera and then do some motion analysis on a computer. We could calculate that acceleration. Um, so let's see what happens if we increase the mass. Now we're keeping this net force the same. And so we can see that we're having a slower acceleration. And so again, force stays the same, but it's not accelerating as quickly, still accelerating. Now let's load it with a bunch of mass and what happens? Constant force, you can see that we have a really small acceleration. It's still accelerating, but it's much smaller than it was before. And so this is just a simple experiment where we're keeping one thing the same, in this case it's going to be the net force, and then we're varying one uh, variable, we'll call that the mass of the cart, and then we're seeing what happens to the acceleration. And so in this kind of equation, we're keeping net force the same, and what are we doing to inertial mass? You can see that we're increasing it, and what happens to the acceleration is it decreases. We increase the inertial mass again, and it decreases again. And so how could you set up an equation where we have force on one side and then this indirect relationship between inertial mass and acceleration? Well, you're probably familiar with this formula. It's Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And so if I solve for mass like that, what have I just discovered here? This is our inertial mass. So it's mass not based on how much the Earth is pulling down on the object, but it's based, on, it's based on the inertia that that object has. And so we were also measuring inertial mass at the beginning when we were talking about that astronaut uh, oscillating up and down on a, on a spring. And so did you learn to design an experiment for collecting data to determine the relationship between the net force, its inertial mass, and its acceleration? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.